finest innovations from Zurich. It removes all pain. Guys like me, we have to turn to booze, the morphine, and that can lead to addiction. Oh, that's fast. Mm -hmm. That's advanced. <laughs> Seeing you two together, uh, Christian, reminds me of when you won the Golden Globe for The Fighter. You went up to the stage, you got your award, and you mentioned Robert De Niro at the end of your speech. Oh. And the music <laughs> cut out. And the music cut out. I never got to hear what you said about Robert. And so seeing you both together, I wanted to first ask you, when I, did you both first really meet, not just in passing, and what do you appreciate the most when watching the other? Act? I think I was very surprised to be up there. I was very delighted. I was having a lot of fun and I saw Bob's face in the crowd. And I gave a few uh, 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 very complimentary expletives about uh, uh, just how good I thought uh, and, and think he is, you know, so what an honor and real pleasure and so damn satisfying to get to work with Bob. It's amazing. What, what do you appreciate the most when watching um, Robert act or Bob? Um, the, the, Don't put him in that position. <laughs> I'm happy to be put in that in that position. You know, he's one of the finest that there has ever been. You know, he's a bedrock of cinema. Uh, I was actually sitting and thinking of the films that I've loved and watched, and I don't watch that many films, and neither does Bob, actually. You know, David is always frustrated with me, and he said it's the same with Bob, that we're constantly going, oh, no, we didn't see that, we didn't see that. But I've seen this man's films, and they're absolutely phenomenal. And uh, uh, what an honor to get to uh, 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 work with him and just be sitting there uh, uh, next to him. But, uh, but equally, um, uh, uh, we like rolling our sleeves up. Bob loves the way that David works. I love it too. So it was a wonderful partnership. I love that. What about you, Robert? Yeah, no, uh, Christian said it. it was, uh, it's always great to work with David. Um, and uh, for us to work together was, for me, uh, great. I wish we had been able to do more. Um, and, you know, David's a, a very special person, a special director, and you know whatever he's going to do, it's going to be special and uh, noteworthy, remembered, uh, and that to me is very, very important. That it's, that it's not just a movie that'll come and go. It'll earn some place in film history, if you will, uh, yeah. del deservedly so. Yes, absolutely. Is this the first time you guys really met, not just in passing, was working on this film, or had you guys met before? I mean, uh, you know, a little bit. We had a day together on American Hustle, but, you know, I, uh, mm -hmm. I was Irv, and, you know, and the, we, we just had a day, and I was kind of sitting silently through uh, most of that scene. So uh, uh, this is the most that we've gotten to do, but as Bob said, I hope we get to do more. Yeah, I hope so, too. Fantastic together. Christian, you played some stellar villains, anti-heroes, Gore the God Butcher, Batman, American Psycho, and your character in this movie, Burt, is so earnest and wholesome, and I was wondering if that's ironically more challenging to play. Um, you know, I mean, I do happen to think the villains always get attention more easily than the good guys. You know, everyone is always fascinated with a bad guy. Uh, uh, but uh, what I love so much about Bert is he, 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 he so very easily through his experiences in life and his painful life and just how tough it is and the injuries that he's received mentally and physically as well. He could have turned, uh, uh, you know, to the other side. He could have become full of hatred and anger, but he refuses that. He refuses to go numb. He refuses to be a puppet to these uh, bad people, uh, puppet masters, and he maintains optimism and love and joy throughout his life. And I think he's incredibly inspiring and he's someone who I would want to be a friend with. Yeah, it was fun watching you like in that earnestness and quirkiness. Um, Robert, I wanted to ask you about a relationship you've had for a very long time um, with New York City. You were born in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. One of the first films you were ever in was called Three Rooms in Manhattan. And a lot of this film takes place in 1930s New York. Uh, do you enjoy films more when they take place in the city? Is there familiarity there that makes it feel warm to you? Well, I, just for practical reasons, I like to shoot in New York. But always, you know, but there's always um, to do a good film that takes place in New York. Of course, that's that's the most important thing. Uh, I would prefer having a. a if I'm lucky, a, a really terrific script, if I'm really lucky, a great script, uh, to be shot in New York, yeah. I love that, yeah, it's, it, there's just something that feels so right about seeing you in a New York movie. And uh, speaking of love, I also love the question that this film poses when it comes to things we love. Is it something that we choose or is it something that we need? I wanted to know when it comes to acting, Robert, do you feel like it's something you chose or do you feel like it's something you need? 
That's interesting. It's a it's a combination of the of both um, and whatever else too. I mean, uh, you need it if it's um, what you want, uh, what you need. I don't know. I'm answering that question as best I can, but I, it, it sort of fits in need, want, uh, destiny, if you will, certain uh, projects. Say with David. David, in the, this particular case, this movie, we would, he would talk to me about the script and this, and and that's a, in, sort of part of his process. And I, you know, just um, he, I'd listen because uh, I knew that's how it is. Even when I'm committed to something, it's just a cre. That's his way of like even finding things in that moment, um, and that's my interpretation of it at least. Um, so that's all good. So it's a, a thing where you kind of, you know at the end of the day you're going to wind up there. Not quite sure how and when yet, but you're figuring it all out. And that's how it works with him. So yeah, that's, you're still uh, on for the ride. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Christian, yeah. do you feel like it's something you chose or something you need? I think that every kid needs and wants to play dress up, right? I mean, you know, I, I, I do believe the best actors are, are animals and children. And I look to them you know, uh, as, as so much inspiration because they don't give a damn about the effect or the consequences. They're just in the moment uh, living it. So I think everybody does that. I then found myself in a situation where it became a need because my dad got ill and I became the breadwinner at a very young age. So I started acting professionally actually because I needed to, you know, and I actually didn't want to. I wanted to rebel against it. I was like, I don't want to do this, but I knew that, man, I had to. And then fortunately enough, you know, you keep doing it long enough of course, you got to pay the bills. This is how we make our livings, you know? And so there is need there. But you're fortunate enough to keep doing it long enough that right now, absolutely, it's a choice. You know, right now, at this point, things may change in the future. But at this point, I don't need to do it. But I choose to do it because I, I want to do it, that. because I love doing it. Yeah. Really quick, you both chose to be in films where you're with this character, the Joker. And I was wondering, has that character ever come up in your dreams or nightmares for either of you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to say, look, uh, I, I miss Heath dearly. And yeah, he'll crop up, but, but it's Heath. It's Heath, not the Joker. Tax the rich. We find ourselves in a situation where we're accused of killing someone, which is not true. It's no you and Woodman fled the scene. The killer pointed at us. We didn't do anything. Why would you possibly think that was us? Well, there's not too many people that fit the description of a doctor looking for his eye on the ground with his uh, black attorney. Columbia Law School. The movie's called Amsterdam, mm. and I love that the city of Amsterdam in this film represents another life for the characters. It's this form of escapism, kind of how we all feel on vacation. And I wanted to ask all of you, where in the world do you feel like that? And what is your Amsterdam? And we'll start with you, Marga. <laughs> I just had a very funny vacation with Rami, actually. So but we won't get into that. Um, I... <laughs> Please do. Wait, we must know The people now. must know. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> we've actually, we've, we've, had, I mean, we've gone on a, a, quite a lot of vacation adventures at this since filming think, this movie. I didn't think you were going to talk about this, but go on. <laughs> Please. Yeah. The Please. people must know. Yeah. We've done New Orleans. Let's not talk about the we've movie. Done, let's talk about, let's our, talk about private our, life. our adventures. Uh, um, we've been, yeah. No, I, I'm not going to get into no, any of that. Ahead. Go no, go ahead. No, no, no. Tell them the whole story. I'm not telling them the whole story. I'll tell you guys laughed. All oh, right, but for me, for me, my Amsterdam, uh, I had a very similar sort of thing. I moved to London on a whim, and my two best friends, uh, Josie and Tom, we kind mm. of like this. Like, oh, actually, do you know what's so weird? The three of us met in Belgium, where Bert, Harold, and Valerie wow. met. I met my two best friends there. I ended up marrying one of them, much like Harold and Valerie fell in love, and um, they're still like my best friends and then this time in London was my, my bubble, like my Amsterdam. Mm. I love that answer. Thanks, Margo. What about you, Rami? Maybe you'll tell us about the vacation. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good summer. That was a, kind of an Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. uh, you want to go? We've Let's had, go. We've had two good summers. We had two good summers. And the winter. Uh, that was fun. You know, we didn't get to have a rap party because of COVID, but the three of us ended up having... Oh, so, and Chris. And Chris. Yeah. yeah. So us and Chris had a mini rap party. Yeah. 
We're going yeah, off we track will. here, but... We're, like, we're not going to go into anymore. A lot, of, a lot of feelings that night. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Our Amsterdam. Uh, I went... I, <laughs> Mark, I never see you laugh this hard in here. Yes. Really? This is Thanks good. Thanks so much. Yeah. You're about to go yeah. viral. We are, we are changing. Uh, I, I, I remember finishing a job where I... I guess I was trying to go method, and I didn't know that it uh, had enough. It took a toll on me, and I thought for a second I don't want to act anymore. And I just uh, I felt like an expat because I took a trip to Argentina and lived in Buenos Aires for a long time, and thought I might never leave that place. And I had uh, just an extraordinary time where uh, I felt free and alive and awake. And uh, that was my Amsterdam. Amsterdam, what was yours? Perhaps Egypt. I met Kareem, my other half. <laughs> thanks, mm. thanks. Um, I met my other half in Egypt. We were, it was quite funny. Uh, it's, it was, all seemed very romantic. I'd just come from Senegal. He's partly Senegalese. It all seemed to make sense. We were making a love story together. We end, we're still together now since we made the film. It was called Luxor. And there Beautiful was a moment film. where we were just looking out on the Nile, watching things float by, including like a dead cow. Uh -huh. And I said to him, where do you live? And he said, Larchmont. And that kind of burst the bubble. Like, <laughs> you know, it's a place in, in LA. Los Angeles, oh, like Larchmont. Larchmont. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want to sound ignorant, but so same, I was just, like, just next about to the studio. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just about where we shot the film. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like that Larchmont. <laughs> he lives just where we shot the film, about wow. three minutes from my house. Okay. And I, you know, so it seemed like perhaps less um, adventurous than at first mm. it had seemed. But, <laughs> but in Egypt will, for its timelessness and its... Um, and it's it's just it's it's like impenetrable magic. So mm -hmm. it'll always be a, a, a place where I, I'm, I'm lost in a way I feel most comfortable. Mm. That's okay. That's okay. Good John. Well, John I can't I can't top that. But I, I recently I did about six months in uh, Thailand, Chiang Mai. Uh, I was in Bangkok, and I I pride myself of being very respectful and 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 humble, but you can't out respect or humble these people. Uh, it was an incredible exhibition of consistent humility and graciousness and 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 really a, a passion for life that I've never seen. I really truly understood peace working there, and that that mm -hmm. really that that whole process changed my life. I'll get into it closer to the release, but uh, that that trip really changed my life. Chiang Mai mm -hmm. in particular. I, I was talking to this eighty-five year old elephant. And just this elephant just seemed to understand my all my problems. It was like my therapist. It was a way I just saw this elephant, elephant nature park, and uh, just the people and 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 the curry, fantastic. Oh, I feel like my, my time in Thailand is very different. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Really? Was it lots of fun, Margot? Okay, so, you know. Oh no. no! You didn't drink out of the buckets? No, no, not in my experience. No. That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it was beautiful to hear all those answers because it really is cool how um, different places in the world can make you guys all feel those different things. What's uh, your John Amsterdam? David. Yeah, what's your Amsterdam? <laughs> My am I love that. Thanks for asking. Um, I think for me, Africa, Kenya, mm -hmm. um, I was volunteering in the Maasai Mara last December and elephants are so emotional and Man, seeing right? the, like the earth untouched. I was like, why do I work in a room on a computer? But anyways, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, John David, I wanted to ask you before I have to wrap up real quick. I know you have this incredible scene in this film with Christian Bale uh, where you're singing and he was in Newsies and you're with Taylor Swift. Who's Taylor Swift? Um, what was shooting that scene like? I know your mother was on Broadway and how do you feel you stacked up? Uh, I hope I didn't let, let the family down, you know, because she can't sing for real. <laughs> My sister could sing and she's a pianist. So no, it was, I felt comfortable. Like I, I've been saying it all day. Like the, there were no egos on this set. And Taylor Swift is just, she was so cool and and just acquiescent to the process and just was able to flow and gave me confidence because she was so nice and accommodating. So, I, you know, I can, there, there was no wrong choices, even if there was wrong notes and tone. So I, <laughs> I, I, I felt good about, I felt good about what I was doing, you know, and fix it. They say it, fix it in edit, fix it in post. So, no problem. <laughs> Auto tune. <laughs> Sweeten it, baby. Sweeten it. These are dangerous times. You be careful. I'm about to do something that could cost me my life. The cuckoo is in the nest, and the cuckoo is about to be trapped.
Cool, cool. Hello, Mike and Michael. Hi. Hi, Ness. How many times did someone refer to one of you on set and the other thought they were talking about? Oh, uh, well, they they kept us separated so that that wouldn't happen. He'd that, be on one side of the room and I'd be on the other. Because you yeah. can imagine how horrific that would be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a uh, nightmare scenario. That is, you yeah. know, doomsday scenario. Really. Yeah. Really, I would refer to it as a dreamlike scenario because seeing the <laughs> yes. both of you on screen made me LOL so oh, much. Oh, cool. I can't believe you just said yeah, I never bit. thought in my wildest dreams, if you had told me like 20 years ago, you're going to get to be like in a duo with Mike Myers, I would have just guffawed. I didn't even think that would be remotely possible. It's like... Just the ultimate international man of mystery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I love it. You guys are both clearly so funny together in this movie, and it must be nice to have a great script and be able to elevate it. Were the both of you riffing at all? Because it feels that way when you're watching it. You know, was any of it improvised? Oh, yeah. We had some, uh, we had a hall pass there. And yeah. Explore. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, David encourages it. Because I think like David, he writes the script and he's super, super serious about it. And then at the last minute, he's like, you know what? Forget that. Let's see what else is going on. You know? Well, it's scenarios. So you can't yeah. improvise some things. You can't improvise a set. You can't improvise a special effect. You know, you can't improvise 12 swans flying, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff is in the script. How you, how it's actually phrased, he's always, if it fits in your mouth better and if it seems to, he's looking for organic. Mm -hmm. He sort of wants to, almost it'd be a, a staged documentary is kind of his feel. Mm -hmm. Did you guys end up shooting anything that ended up on the cutting room floor, you know, that we didn't see? I never saw the cutting room floor. I don't know what ended up there. I hope they sweep. <laughs> yeah. You know, it could be the bugs or something. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think there's, I to be frank, I haven't seen the movie yet, so I have no I, idea. I never remember, I, I get uh, cutnesia. Yeah, I, I, you know what I mean. I also get versionitis. I never remember. Yeah, because I write a lot of my own stuff, so I. Right. I'll always go. Do you remember that part? And my wife Kelly goes, "That wasn't in the movie. It didn't make the final cut." Go, <laughs> oh. <shit."> okay. <laughs> it's funny, Mike, when you were saying, you know, a lot of it's already in the film and the scenario. Because to me, I don't know why, but bird watching is mm. just comedic. Like mm. even the words "bird watching" is mm. funny to me. I don't know why I can't pinpoint it. If this film was a bird, what bird do you think it would be, Mike? An American eagle. Eagle. Why? Because uh, in the end, democracy triumphs. Uh, they were an endangered species. But uh, the only reason the American eagle is back is because uh, it meant something to people and it needed to be protected. So I think it is the American eagle. Democracy is a very fragile experiment. And in the world of history, democracy is like right there and this is present time, you know what I mean? And uh, it's a very thin membrane democracy. And it, uh, it needs to be protected, you know, like a Fabergé egg. That was such a beautiful, well thought out answer. I love that. Um, Sh Michael Shannon, what was it like uh, working with Robert De Niro? Actually, for the both of you, but we'll start with you, Michael. Well, I'm on, I'm, I was about the bird question. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, what bird? <laughs> well, I would say it's, a, it's an American Eagle, but it's directed by a hummingbird. Yes. Yes, because that's the energy of, of David. David. Yeah. It's like, shh, and like, Poking the, mm -hmm. getting the the stuff out of the flower, and yeah. Anyway, that, that's my answer to that question. Uh, working with De Niro was, uh, I, I mean, I, I I was in a state of shock, really. I mean, the guy is uh, one of my all time uh, heroes of of acting. I remember, you know, seeing all his films uh, back when I was a teenager. You know, Taxi Driver and Raging Bull and. King of Comedy is actually one of my favorite, favorite movies. Um, so yeah, to be there in front of him was uh, pretty extraordinary. And he's also really nice. He gave he gave us all uh, an orchid. I walked in my dressing room one day and there was an orchid on mm. the counter and a little card that said, you know, 
Handwritten. Yeah, handwritten mm -hmm. card. Welcome to the show. Looking forward to working with you, Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. So wow. I threw that out. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I still have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Mike, you know, you, you've done some incredible impersonations and accents over the course of your career. I was actually wondering, do you have a Robert De Niro impersonation? Oh. Uh, silent. This is it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's That's not it. good. Yeah. And we'll obviously cut that out. Yeah, don't we, don't turn terrible. this into another that, that, Tom Hiddleston on Graham Norton. That was terrible. By the way, thank, thank you. you. That was so funny. That was great. You guys. No, I looked like absolutely. a Muppet. Forget it. It looked like. I, <laughs> it could have been that or it was the Muppet version of Robert De Niro. Yes, that's when what Robert I do. De Niro was. I on only the do Muppets. Muppet impressions. Yeah, yeah. 